Hey everybody, uh, my name is Brian. I'm one of the uh, ministers here at First Baptist Canyon Lake and hopefully you're viewing this uh, for one, or, one of two reasons. Uh, either you got one of the bags of empty eggs that we were giving out to the community to um, hopefully show a little bit of the love of Jesus. Um, we realize that maybe that's not quite as good as an Easter egg hunt, but we Hope that it's something that would be beneficial to your family and maybe help you save a few extra dollars. So uh, maybe you are watching this video because you got one of those, you scanned the QR code and um, you're able to watch it there. Or maybe you just stumbled upon it as something, maybe a, a resource to help your family kind of make, take an Easter egg hunt and make, make it a, a gospel-centered event. And so whatever it is, um, however you found yourself to this video, um, welcome. We're so glad that you decided to watch it and we pray that it would be a blessing to you. So basically what we want to do is, is um, you know, the, the important thing about Easter is Jesus, right? It's not Easter eggs, it's not Easter bunnies or anything like that, or, um, or even something as wonderful and incredible as family time. It really is about celebrating the resurrection of Christ. And so I wanted to share that story with you and, and share it maybe a little bit for so that kids can understand it. And so I thought the best way to do that is to do it with um, some Easter eggs. And so I'm going to do that. So um, I've got two Easter eggs to start with. Uh, this one is kind of a sort of a symbol of humanity. And this one is a symbol of God. So start with this one. It, I guess really both of them is in the beginning, God made everything, right? He He made the stars, the moon, the sun, the earth. Um, he made the universe and he made us. And he made us in his image. You'll see that, you know, the eggs are, they, they kind of look alike. They, they're not the same, but they kind of look alike. And God made us in his image and he made us to live in relationship with him and, and really to be like him. So that was great. But then we decided that, you know, we really think that we know how to live our lives and we want to live our lives the way that we want to. We don't want to live our lives to be like God. We want to live our lives to just be like us, to do our own thing. And so when we did that, that create a problem. It, create, it brought brokenness into the world, um, and, and it brought sin into the world. And so what, what that looks like is it, anything that we think, that we say, or that we do that breaks God's law or makes him sad. And so, so with, with that brokenness in the world, um, you know, it, it kind of leaves an emptiness in us, and, and it leaves us with something that we're trying to figure out, like, what, what can we fill ourselves with to make this brokenness go away, to, to make us whole again. Because God made us whole, but then when we decided to do things on our own, it kind of created this sort of, this, this place where pain comes in and, and consequences of, of bad actions and things like that come in. And so, so we try to, to try to fill this. Now, one thing that some people try to do is they try to fill it with technology. And so, but you can see that the technology doesn't, it's not really any way to make it fit. So technology is not a good good thing to fill it with. Sometimes I know some of us uh, young adults and and I, I don't know maybe older adults and definitely kids uh, we try to maybe fill our lives fill that emptiness with a toy of some sort and so maybe uh, for adults it's something like a I don't know a four wheeler or a, you know some sort of um, maybe a home or something like that, but you know, something, just a, a possession of some sort, but you can see that it doesn't, that doesn't really fit either. And then we, we sometimes, and, and maybe this is the most that we do, we, we try to fill it with people. And so we've got, you know, we try to kind of put a person in that hole and, and maybe make them fill us up and, and make us feel good and make us feel whole, but you can see that that doesn't really fit either. And so we're kind of left with this conundrum of, God, how, how can we be whole again? We, we want to come back to you. We want to uh, be in relationship with you. How can we do that? Well, that's where Jesus comes in. So God made a plan when the fall happened, when we sinned and we decided to do things our own way. And God sent Jesus and Jesus is God, but in the flesh. Like So uh, kids, that just means that he came in, in, in a body, right? And he was born um, he lived a completely perfect, sinless life, and he came and he taught us how to follow God, how to be like God, how to how to um, 
live out his image, his, his plan for our lives on a daily basis. So he really showed us that. But then he did something incredible. He died on the cross for us and rose again three days later so that we could have life in him. So he didn't just show us how to live our lives. He actually made the way for us to be able to live out our image, to be like God, to, to make the decision to say, you know what, I don't wanna do things my way anymore. I wanna do things God's way. And so the result of that, of that sinful nature that, that you know, doing things our own way was death, but Jesus took on that death and he died for us. He was perfect, he didn't have to die, he didn't have to, but he did it because it was God's plan and because he loves us so much. So he died on the cross, but it didn't stop there. If it stopped there, then really, you know, we can just count Easter out, it doesn't really matter that much. But instead, three days after he died, he rose from the grave, which is wild and incredible. He showed that he has the keys to victory. He has the keys to life. And he brings eternal life to us. And so what he does, though, is he says, you know what? You can't ever earn your way to heaven. You can't ever do enough. But I've earned the way. I've done it. And so I'm going to cover you with my, my good works, with my good righteousness. And so when God sees you, he sees me. He sees Jesus. And so he sees Jesus' good works, and, while, and, and then he keeps us in that salvation. He keeps us saved. So the other thing that Jesus gives us when we're saved, when we put our faith and our trust in him, that's how we get to this point. That's how we get to the point where Jesus gives us his good works so that we can be saved and so that we can live like God wants us to live. Um, is that we put our faith in him. We trust him with our entire lives. We say, God, you can do whatever you want in my life. And in fact, I will, I'm okay with doing whatever you want me to do. So you tell me what you want me to do and, you can, and then I will do it. You can tell me what to do. So he covers us with his righteousness, but he gives us a gift. He gives us the Holy Spirit inside of us so that when we are struggling, when we're having difficulty, when we're trying to figure out how does God want me to be like him. I'm, I, I have this sin in my life or I have this difficulty that I'm dealing with. How does God want me to, to walk this out? Well, he gives us his Holy Spirit to guide us. And his Holy Spirit uses people and uses um, God's word to, to teach us how to follow Jesus, how to be like God, how to live in his image. And so that is the good news of Jesus. That's the good news of Easter. And I hope that um, you kids and adults alike, if you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus, if you've never said, Jesus, you can have my life, you can do what you want with it. You can, you can tell me what to do and I'll do it. If you've never done that, I want to challenge you. It is the best decision that you'll ever make because like at the beginning of the story, God made us to be in a relationship with him. And when we are in relationship with him, we can truly live an abundant life. It doesn't mean that everything's going to be hunky-dory and everything's, you know, just we're going to get whatever we want and it's all going to be great because we live, we still live in a sin-fallen world, but it does mean that we live with purpose, that we live with hope, and we live with a love that we could not conjure up on our own. We live with a love of Jesus who came and died on the cross for us and a power that rose him from the grave. And so I want to challenge you and encourage you. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, if you've never entrusted your life to him, do that today. If you have any questions about that or you, or you want to just kind of talk to someone so you can kind of talk through it, please feel free to call us at the church. Uh, you can shoot us an email. Uh, any of us uh, ministers, uh, Peter, Andrew, uh, Jacob, or me, Brian, at fbccanyonlake.org. You can shoot us an email. You can call us. Um, you can hit us up on social media, however you want to. But if you want to talk about how to follow Jesus and how to um, give your life to him, that is our favorite thing to talk about. So we hope that you are blessed this Easter uh, with lots of great family time and fun Easter egg hunts and all of those things, and especially with all this craziness that's going on with coronavirus. We pray that you stay safe. But most importantly, we pray that you would rejoice because you know the living Savior, Jesus. 
Thank you. We're so um, blessed to serve you and to serve the community of Canyon Lake. If there's anything that we can do for you, please let us know.